three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. gentlemen theys and gays this is the real pineapple and this is your humble host hunter here hope you're all having a great night day weekend weekday whenever you're checking this out but i've got a review for this really cool documentary that i got to watch and i i'll i'll, I'll get into it in a second here but i'm lucky enough to go ahead and get you know screeners and stuff or screener opportunities sent to me and i get quite a few for documentaries and i've been trying to be better just because you know the Trump years were exhausting enough. Uh, it's hard enough to watch documentaries about things that can be depressing. And I, I'm trying to be better about expanding my horizons in that way and just watching more documentaries. And so this one, I saw the trailer for it and it really captivated me. And I'm really happy I watched it. It's called Let the Little Light Shine, which is directed by Kevin Shaw. You know Kevin Shaw as the director from the documentary America to me. He worked on the documentary Goose about the legendary uh, legendary Harlem Globetrotter, uh, the ESPN film, which if you've, if you've not seen Goose, watch that. That, oh, it's so good. I'll probably review that at some point. But this movie, or this documentary in question is about this incredibly well-performing, high-achieving elementary school uh, in downtown Chicago. And basically, the school is doing so well that at a point, we find out that, oh, there's this this uh, this new part of Chicago that has a lot of, a lot of fancy buildings coming up, a lot more white people moving in. And basically, the school district goes, well... We need to go ahead and not have this be a elementary school anymore. And what's so fascinating about this in particular, and I, I'm going to try really hard to kind of dance around a few things because I really do want people to check this out for themselves. But one thing I love about this documentary is that it shows all sides. And while there, while you will definitely lean towards these kids and the teachers and all the people who make this school a community, which is something that for me, Shaw does flawlessly is that he shows that these kids not only matter, but that they love on each other and that these teachers love on them. And the the main parent in question that we follow, uh, Elizabeth Green, who's a kid goes to NTA Something that I love about her is that she is just this mom who kind of through happenstance kind of falls into this role of this activist. She says early on in the documentary, and I love that she says this. And again, I'm going to gush about Kevin Shaw quite a bit here because this is just one of those documentaries that as I was watching it, I went, damn, I'm so happy that this got on my radar and I'm so happy I get to review this for y'all because this is something everyone needs to see, especially if you're a parent, uh, especially if you're a person of color, but everyone regardless needs to see this documentary. But she comes out very early on and says, I'm okay with being seen as an angry black woman. And because she realizes maybe not the gravity of what she's taking on, but she understands that any sort of resistance that she's going to go ahead and provide anytime she speaks into a megaphone anytime she is that angry mother for her kids because she wants them to do better she's going to be seen as the angry black woman and while that is tragic as hell because when white men do that shit it's seen as passionate but when black black women do it they're seen as irrational and the documentary does talk about that it, it does lean into some race relations things and does lean in, um, ultimately into some classist elements as well. And it's a really, it's a really fine thread that Shaw's working with because there's a lot of things going on with this documentary. And at an hour and 26 minutes, it's just under 90 minutes. There's a lot of information that you get from this documentary, but I believe it's really quite e easily uh, digestible. And once you do finish the documentary, you are going to kind of be sitting there going, wow, 
I have quite a lot to think about. Because I actually watched this twice. I watched this um, maybe a month ago when I got the documentary, and then I watched it again a couple weeks ago. But this is just one of those things I go, yeah, people need to, people really do need to watch this. By the way, I don't think I mentioned it, but NTA stands for National Teachers Academy, by the way, just for a point of context. And uh, Rahm Emanuel, who was the mayor of Chicago from 2011-2019, he's basically the reason that this crap is happening. And one thing that this documentary points out that I think is a very unpleasant conversation, which is why a lot of people don't want to have it, is that, you know, we, we talk about people of color, and I've talked about it on the podcast, for, you know, being able to take uh, you know, lemons and make lemonade, you know, we got, you know, we were given pig feet and we said, you know, we're going to throw hot sauce on them and we're going <laughs> to, and we're going to make them, wor- make it work. And the documentary does a great job of talking about how NTA was a lower performing school that went through a lot of growing pains. They interviewed the old principal, uh, Amy Rome, who was the principal from 06 to 2012. And she talked about how early on in her tenure, how she really realized, you know, in order for this to work and for this to no longer just be a school that's underperforming, that we needed to open it up to the parents. We need to touch bases with the, commun- uh, the community and sh- and how, you know, we need we need to go ahead and speak to the masses and how the school needs to feel like everyone is involved. And that leads to Isaiah uh, Castellas, who we follow throughout the documentary and One thing I love about him is that he acknowledges very early on that as a white man, not only does he have to help these kids and steer them in the right direction, make them feel listened to, make them feel cared for, make it feel like everyone is truly there to help them. But there is the racial component of him being a white guy talking to, you know, people of a a mostly black and Latino school and you know, earning their trust on that level. And it's one of those fascinating things where I went, wow, I'm A, I'm happy he's aware of his privilege, but B, I'm happy that he's willing to put in the work and go, oh, my privilege doesn't matter to me in the sense of I still want to go ahead and get to speak with these kids and and really be there for these kids. There's this really cool little subplot where he's having lunch with uh, this girl, Zara, and they're having this back and forth and you know she's struggling in school and he talks to her and he's like look you know you know i want to see good grades from you and he's offering help about you know hey on monday we'll look at your grades and we'll we'll develop a plan together on how to go ahead and help you excel and there's there's a lot of that in the documentary from him you really do feel like he gives a damn and as the film goes on as things get more dire and as the situation does ramp up something that i love about the documentary that is that shaw shows is that isaac flat out says that if the school board knew i was talking to y'all i'd be fired but he flat out says that i understand that he doesn't come out and say that i'm a cock on a wheel but he understands that these kids futures are what matter and these kids need to understand that there are people there for him and the thing about the opposition from this side is that the way that they are being so it's just a school. Who cares? It's so dismissive, and it's that sort of bullshit that in the education system just makes you roll your eyes and makes you wonder. This is it makes you realize this is why kids don't like to go to freaking school because school's not challenging for them. People don't feel like people are actually listening to them or hearing them. Uh, to quote Training Day, you know, in Alonzo, you know, you're you're hearing me, but you're not listening to me. You know, I I've talked about my school experiences how. I can count on maybe one hand the amount of teachers that I truly liked and felt that were actually invested in my education. But at the same time, for making, you know, 10K a year or whatever teachers make, it's barely more than that. How invested can you expect teachers to be? You know, teachers are having to buy their own school supplies. And I know that because one of my old jobs, we would do one of these teacher giveaways and give away like $500 worth of school materials. And the teachers would always cry because, oh my God, I don't have to spend my own money to stock my classrooms. What a concept. And so it's one of those things that while you watch a documentary, you're going to get upset. And the thing is, you should be upset because the the public education system freaking sucks. And the way that we really do 
teach everyone the same curriculum and don't in any way try to shake that up. I mean, hell, we're at a point right now where we're not even comfortable saying slavery right now. Thanks, Republicans. So there's that whole aspect to it. And and the documentary does go into that. And I really hope, because there are a couple people, and I again, I don't want to get too much into the spoilers, but there are a few people on the op- on the opposite uh, on the opposition, pardon me, who are definitely going like, well, why is the school being shut down such a big deal? Come on, it's not a big deal. And the more you hear them talk, the more their racism and their classism and their ignorance really begins to show. And I'm so happy because I got to interview Kevin Shaw about this documentary that will be releasing the same day as I post this. But what I love about that is that Kevin really takes a step back, and I mentioned earlier, he shows all sides of the documentary. He really does show, you know, the people who are trying to save the school. He shows the people who are trying to turn into a high school. But it never feels biased, even though you will inevitably cheer for the kids to save the school. But he really lets the people who are terrible be terrible and show their true colors. And at the end of the documentary, I really was sitting there kind of in awe of how incredibly tone deaf some of these people were and how they think they're on the right side of history and it's really quite fascinating how people feel like they are on the right side of history even when they're incredibly incredibly wrong there's a point where the uh, the kids uh, the kids from nta go ahead and they go to this uh this uh committee meeting that they're having about the school and I but Earl Granberry, I believe is the guy's name. He listens to the kids talk about how, you know, this is a community. I don't think y'all understand that this is a community. And the fact that this is something that means so much to us, you know, I met my best friends here. I learned this here. I love the way that these kids speak with passion and conviction. And I can tell you these kids, whatever they end up doing, they're going to end up being amazing at it. it. You feel how upset they are and yet composed and you know, as I mentioned earlier with Elizabeth Green, you know, being the being the hysterical person of color, unfortunately, I've been there. You know, I've been told I'm too radical or what have you. And having these kids and let's keep in mind, they're freaking kids. I'm trying not to cuss because it's about kids. But the fact that they're so passionate and there are these parents and these teachers, uh, not teachers, but these these people in positions of power just looking down on them and being so condescending. Uh, Earl Granberry, who I just mentioned, this point, I have the quote here. He goes, are you guys finished? I think you're being misled. And it's so aggressive the way he says that right out of the gate. I was sitting here rolling my eyes as I was watching the documentary because he comes across like such an entitled piece of crap. But the way that he just goes, you know, you're being misled. This is a proposal. We're doing this to help all of you. I went... Yeah, no, you're not, actually. This is actually horribly detrimental to these kids. And if you would take half a step back and actually realize that, maybe you wouldn't be such a freaking goon. But there are several talking heads in this documentary who come across just like that. In that in that way that I've talked about how, you know, doing missionary work, and I this will probably get me in trouble, but it's my show. Who cares? You know, in the same way of doing missionary work, it really is nationalism. Like, oh, hey, people of color, you don't know about Jesus? Oh, well, here's this Bible. Oh, oh, do you want this clean water? We'll take this Bible first. Like, I know pe- I know some people will go, dude, it's not the same thing. Kind of is, actually. And the fact that these kids are smart enough this early on to realize how the shell games kind of played, it's going to make them great adults. And I can't wait to, uh, I, I I really am going to have to ask Kevin about if he has a plan to do a follow-up documentary of some of these kids. Because some of these kids in this documentary kick so much ass. And I would love to see if they end up being you know lawyers or civil rights activists or whatever they end up doing. So there's a point here in the documentary that I found just, or one of the points that I found fascinating is Chance the Rapper shows up. Yes, that Chance the Rapper. Uh, Chicago's own Chance the Rapper. And he shows up and he's talking to, to the kids and he talks about how this whole situation, this whole news story got on his radar and how he just wanted to use his celebrity to help because, as most of you know, Chance, Chance is from the shy. And so, you know, he talks about how he wants to use his status to help these kids out and how he straight up blocked 
and told that he'll be escorted out if he shows up at the school to help raise money. And you go, wow, that's how much this school district is afraid of potentially having the school saved. And you just realize in that moment how much that shell game just comes out. And I just went, wow, that's monstrous. And I'm so happy they got to talk to Chance for a bit about that. Because even he says, there's no reason for me to not be here to help these kids. And you just go, oh, there's a reason because they don't want you helping. And it's just, it's so horrifying when you think about the amount of roadblocks that are put in the way for these kids to just save the school because they're happy being there. And there's a point where they talk about how they don't have money to help this school, but the fact that they're willing to tear the school down and use this money to go ahead and make it a high school, you go, Oh, so you're a bunch of hypocrites as well. It It's so insane how it, this movie just shows the hypocrisy on the other side from these people who want to take the school down. There's a point where we hear parents from the other side talking about how, oh, wow, you're going, you're having your kids go to NTA. You're going to that school. They, t- they talk about the fact that there is a the um, a CPS, how they wanted a separate main office. They wanted separate entry times for these kids, for all the white kids, basically. And it's one of those points in the documentary, you take a step back and go, um, seriously? And there are several moments like that, that as a person of color, I was just flabbergasted by. Uh, CPS is Chicago Public Schools, by the way. The documentary flout says that Kevin Shaw reached out to them for comment on all these things that he lays out. And he flout didn't respond because they know they're wrong. And honestly, if if I were for Chicago Public Schools and I watched this documentary, I wouldn't want to talk to Kevin Shaw either. But I think that speaks volumes. It's amazing how you can say so much without saying a damn word. And Chicago Public Schools comes off like Hydra in this documentary, but it's their own words and their own lack of actions. And it just, it's crazy to me how this documentary breaks down. And again, I'm dancing around a lot of stuff because I really want you to discover, discover this on your own. So I mentioned him earlier. Uh, I mentioned Isaac earlier. And one thing as I kind of wrap up here that I love about the documentary is that it talks about how things were really hard for him early on. There is an incident involving pizza, and I'll leave it at that, that he even talks about how that was a huge misfire for him and how he really had to learn and take the heat and, and, and you know, get all the smoke for that, for this incredibly bad handling of a situation that he has but he talks about how that made him better for the kids but it's a situation that when you watch it you go oh man yeah this is a swing and a miss but it's so well done and it's so inspired to see him realize you know i effed up let me go ahead and be better and at the end of the day that's all we should all want is you know yeah we'll all fall short we will all mess up but he recognized it and he truly made a change for the betterment of these kids and for himself and i i love i love that that's in here um they use the term dog whistle in the in the documentary uh i can't remember the parent who brings it up i love the fact that's brought up because we talk about the whole well we're trying to just make things better for black people and the way that the term is used here and the way that's de- defined given the situation and given the uh, the uh, the meeting that's taking place, it's a really powerful scene. It's one of those moments in the documentary that I actually paused and rewound and went, "Oh wow, okay." Like I, I'm really digging that you went ahead and that you went ahead and did this. There is a there is a, another lawyer, the lawyer for the NTA, Candace Moore, and I won't get into what she says or what have you, but. Her words are so powerful and they ring so true. And there is almost this, this glee coming from her with mixed with confusion because when she's kind of explaining why she took the case and what she sees happening on the Chicago public school side, you just almost hear this, uh, this, this aspiration from her where she's just like, Oh my God, I can't believe that this is even a case I have to take. Because she just seems confused in the best way. Because she's like, why would you want to take something so great away from these kids? And what Candace has to say, 
I thought was so powerful, and I just I loved whenever she was on screen. She's she's a badass, and anyone should aspire to have the level of confidence that Candace has. But I I absolutely love this documentary. I'm so happy this documentary exists. If you are an educator, if you're a parent, if you're a person of color, if you're someone who just wants to be more involved and learn more about the story, this is well worth your time. Um. I, I adore this movie. I adore this documentary so, so much. Um, this is going to be on PBS in December. That That's something I can tell y'all. As the documentary gets closer to actually coming out, I'll, I'll definitely tweet about it on our socials and everything, or post about it on our socials. But this is an absolutely incredible film. This is an incredibly well-crafted documentary by by Kevin Shaw. And this is just something I can't wait to watch again. It's something I'm excited to show my friends who are teachers and who have kids because it really is something everyone needs to see. But this is a fan, in this case, I'll say fan f fantastic. I absolutely adore this documentary. Please watch it when it comes out on PBS. It is well worth your time. I know it is playing in select theaters now. So if, if this is playing near you, go see this. Please go see this and support this documentary. But everyone, let the little light shine. What did you think about it? What's your favorite documentary? I, I will ask that question. If you've seen this, please let me know what you thought about it. But if you haven't seen it, what's your favorite documentary? I I'd love to get people's thoughts on it. But you can follow yours truly on the Twitter at jhunterrealpineapple. You can follow the podcast. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Definitely uh, rate us. It helps the podcast out a lot. But you can find us on SoundCloud, Apple Google Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Music, Tune Up, and Samsung Podcasts at The Real Pineapple. You can follow yours truly on Letterboxd at Black Shazam. And you can follow me on TikTok at Black Shazam 775. Uh, thank you so much for listening, y'all. We'll have the Real Spooky series continuing throughout October, including reviews for X, Hocus Pocus 2, the Scream franchise, along with some other stuff. Um, thank you so much for listening, everyone. Please stay safe out there. Take care of each other. Tell someone you love them today. We all, uh, we all need to hear that more. But thanks again for the support, y'all, and I'll talk to you soon.